Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodokar Schaller. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about supercars and supercars 2. And, and possibly everything all in the between. other supercars. There's all kinds of These things are everywhere. There's a lot of supercars in this world, and I own most of them. Really? Yes. Where are they? I didn't see them upstairs. In, in my matchbox. You got your <laughs> matchbox. I thought you had a garage somewhere that I didn't know about. But before like we... Jay Leno. Oh, that would be great. Before we get into Supercars Madness, uh, we have some feedback from last week. Really? And the most important piece of feedback last week was, hey guys, you screwed up big time. Yes, we did. And we knew it. it well, go ahead. We knew it as we were saying No, it. we knew it beforehand. We knew yeah. we were going to botch this, yeah. but go ahead and tell the so tale. So last week, if you can recall, we did uh, One Step Beyond. And um, we, yeah. we had a box copy of the game that was sent to us by a listener. And uh, this was during a time when we were getting tons of, uh, tons of mail from, from everywhere. And like idiots, we didn't label who sent us what for future reference. And so um, we, this actually came in a package. We got two packages that we opened on the same week. And um, this is this is what the package looked like. Uh, didn't mean to put that over your face there. Yeah, right. Um, and so the uh, the package contained um, it contained mail from both uh, Brutal Barracuda over in England and also Jonas Rulo in Hawaii. Neither of which we we thought actually <laughs> sent us the package because O'Brien's just sent us some other stuff. Yeah, and um, but Brutal actually sent us a package full of um, video game tie-ins. So he sent us some Lucasade. He sent us some uh, Quavers. We had had which Quavers we did, before. We were t- yeah, uh, some um, the Penguin Biscuits from Those the great. James Pond oh, 2 yeah, game good, yeah. and some awesome personalized Amigos mag- or mugs. So uh, thank you so much. Which I've also given wrong credit for those in the past. Awesome. So again, for, for, for now and forever, thank you, Brutal Barracuda, and we apologize. Sorry. And, and, and in all honesty, let, let's get this delve deeper, because that sort of sounded disclaimery. We before First of all, we were talking about this before the show. When we, when we got that box that was the tie-ins, like we never played a couple of it, so we didn't get it. Right. Like the Quavers thing, I remember during the show last week, you're like, I think we had those. Well, we did absolutely had them because we were too stupid to remember. Yeah, because one step beyond, on the box, it doesn't say anything about Quavers. And so, and, and so. so we had, we're just, we, and the thing is, we, we before the show, we were like, boy, we're going to look stupid here. We better get this right. We, we called just, it. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, so we apologize. And plus, B- Brutal is a good friend of the show, in the brain trust, really helps out in a lot of good videos and the Amigos challenge stuff so we personally apologize that was a colossal idiot mistake and absolutely we were stupid. absolutely what else you got all right we got a, a message from graham um vebke graham vebke uh talking about the weather we were talking about how cold it's been lately yeah and uh he says that uh in sydney they're expecting 110 fahrenheit so uh, wow 110 eh? yeah boy so, i'd like to be there That'd wow be great. it's freaking cold here it's freaking hot there i love hot yeah that's good you're I hot could, I, you know, I could be cool. I could be down with the Australia, except because they've got lots more chicks than they do dudes, right? So you're right there. You're in demand. That's true. And then secondly, right? They've got great weather, all those beaches. But here's the bad part: weird creatures. They got tons of weird creatures. They got everything's re- out to kill you. They got spiders that sounds like a trash can lid, mm-hmm. right? And you don't want any of that. No. And they've got weird. They got all kinds of crazy junk in the in the desert out there. You know, weird bugs. I, don't, I can't handle that, man. That's yeah. why I don't live in the desert. It's the same thing. I, you know, I can't handle that. There's many reasons I don't live in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got a Your message. complexion would not do well there. No. We got a message from Jason Warrens. He says that his car was showing 38, negative 38 C on the dash, which is negative 34 Fahrenheit. Holy moly. And yeah. where's, where's Warrens at? And so he's up in Canada. Oh, man. Yeah. Are you yeah. N- Western Canada. 
the coldest part. Holy smokes. Can yeah. you imagine that? We're complaining about our weather. Yeah. But those guys up there, they're hard men. They are. They're not like us. We're soft and delicate. That's we can't handle that. My nickname's Lace. <laughs> so, uh, not my business, really. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for writing into the show. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, that's it for the feedback this week. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the Slow Norris did leave us a, an iTunes review. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and he, he said, I've listened to these guys for some time. Uh, and he says it's his favorite podcast. He's a Patreon supporter. Thumbs up to Boater and Aaron. The Boatster. You know, i got to say, Slow Norris, I've been uh, talking with him in, on an email, and he's a, quite a fellow, and he's actually going to send me out some... Uh, uh, additional goodies for the uh, Amiga 600 that I got from the Huck, mm -hmm. and so that's that's awesome. So I thank you for that as well, and thank you for the feedback. Very good. Excellent. That's excellent. Level. Yeah. Well, Aaron, it's time to move on to the Amiga well, news let me of the get week. The Gambletron 5000 out here. So let's just start off by I hate to do this. This I don't think this has ever happened in my whole life. Uh oh. I'm going to praise my brother in, in something. Uh, he put together as a uh, an art project to learn a program he's working on. He took a uh, Donkey Kong fly, arcade flyer, and he Amiga-fied it for he Amigos it uh, for us, and it looks it looks great. It looks pretty professional. It looks, yeah, it looks awesome. And so I'm going to get the PDF and print some of these out just because I thought they're cool looking, and I like the fact that uh, he got my good side there. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, very cool. And so and we appreciate it. So Brent, you're 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 no good. <laughs> you're a disappointment, but you are good. You have uh, found your niche, glorifying me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so I thought that was nice. So next on the docket, uh, well, let me get back to the docket here. Hold on, I've lost my place. Okay, uh, I loaded some stuff in today that I thought was interesting. Uh, on Indie Retro News, our favorite, there is a new game out. It's a 1940, everyone knows 1942, right? Remember 1942, the wacky, I believe it was a Capcom, uh, joint. Yeah, vertical it, shooter. That's right. Mm -hmm. Someone has taken the game, uh, the gaming language Amos, and as as is in the process of recreating 1942 in it. Now this is a demo. You know, normally I don't do demos, but this is touches two of my uh, favorite things, which is arcade games and and, and Amos is always uh, a, a very usable uh, uh, gaming tool. And so, and I watched the demo, and I thought it looked pretty good. Yeah. So, if you want to check that out, I thought it was kind of, I thought it was kind of neat, you know. And if 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 that's your bag, go for it. Um. So let's talk about our good friends over at uh, Amiga-News.de. I get a lot of uh, interesting tidbits from these guys, and they have come up with a couple free PDFs that are available. Uh, one is called 101 Amiga Games, and one is called Lemmings the Ports. Uh, they're free t PDFs. Uh, I believe they are in English. <laughs> so uh, g if you want to uh, uh, have a look at these, uh, you can have a look at them, which is pretty cool. I boats actually flipping through some stuff right now. That looks pretty nice. Yeah, this looks really awesome. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, yes. One other thing here. Uh, this is also from Indie Retro News. Again, this is a demo, but it looks so good that I had to I had to mention it. It's a game that's going to be called Highway Sprint. Have you looked at Highway Sprint, Boat? I have, and I am a sucker for this kind of game because I love any kind of top-down racer, which right. is great because we're doing supercars. Yeah. And uh, this really reminds me of something like Bump and Jump or, one, or Spy and Hunter, one of now, those games. I'm going to ask you, and we've never talked about this. We've never met before this show, have we, Boat? <laughs> what is your opinion of Bump and Jump? I think Bump and Jump is one of my top five top-down racing games of all See, time. See, God bless you, but because I love me some Bump and Jump. Yeah. I love it. I remember the first time I played it was in a little supermarket in the, uh, on the uh, right out right near where Mud Mountain was, actually, in Charleston. This is, uh, I was a little kid, and my granny what's, what's lived there. What's the name of it? It's gone long gone. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now it's a place you donate blood. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, uh, and and I, I walked in. I was like, "What is this? A bump and jump? Oh, holy smokes! It's just like the Duke Boys. You're, you're, oh, you're yeah. flying you're, your car, yeah. you know." And I loved it. And so, and this game, it, it, there's no jumping in it as far as you know. It's just it's just more of a slot racer more yeah. than anything else. But it looks, it looks good. It definitely looks very arcadey, mm -hmm. you know. And it looks fast. So uh, that might be something to uh, to check out in the future. Uh, I think everything else I've got. Oh no! Wait, one more item. Uh, someone posted this, and it's good to share. There's a new uh, issue of Amigo, F Amiga Future One Thirty, 
uh, is out, and it's uh, 20 years. And I looked at what they had on the cover, and the reason I really am going to build this, not because, oh, first of all, we love Amiga Future. We got a copy of that way back in the day. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And uh, there's somebody, some nice person, I think, that was in that sent it to us. And we, it's a, it's a solid magazine in the boat. We really enjoyed it. And right on the front here, one of the first things you see, Killer Bees. It's like, <laughs> killer Bees, which I still love the, uh, the Amiga uh, port of that. Also, Flight of the Amazon Queen is mentioned, which it, that seems to be coming up more and more. That's what we're going to have to probably take a look at, yeah. because I keep hearing more and more about it. The translation just came through, so that's something to look at. But Amiga Future, if you're into Amiga Future, uh, check that out. It looks, it, they're always, it's a it's a top shelf uh, magazine. Paper, top quality. Everything yeah. about it is is well done. So so we're going to, so do you want me to go ahead and cover the site news yeah, as well while we're on mind. here? Now, I'm, I told Bo, because I, I don't like to, I, I have a habit of mentioning things we've seen before, but I'm going to mention this because I hadn't seen it before, and it's so wacky that I'm going to mention it. It's a it, Dreamcatcher. Uh, if you've ever seen, you know, Dreamcatcher does some top shelf, uh, tippity top articles for, mm -hmm. for us. And, and by the way, if you haven't uh, checked out his uh, free charitable compilation of articles, uh, go to our site, uh, everythingamiga.com, and, and it's there and it is a glorious. It's a tome, isn't it, Boat? This compilation of It of is, articles. yeah. Yeah, it will keep you busy for a long, long time. But what has it gotten as much... He only recently has Dreamcatcher began making these videos. <laughs> and and the video here, he he shows some pictures. This is a this is a preview of his Simpsons episode. So, yes, uh, uh, the the Simpsons one has... Which is a great, a great article he did. It's also on everything. All this stuff's on everything Amiga. But he did this video where he meshed up his tour of a graffitoed alley wall with Simpsons characters on it with They Live with Roddy Piper. And one thing that there's a staple in the in Dreamcatcher's videos, which is the ever present robot that does all the all the talking. Mm -hmm. and so it is a very it's a very bizarre <laughs> video. It's funny. I'm a big fan of They Live. Have you ever seen have you seen They Live? You've never seen this one? Sounds scary. Now let me tell you something. I know you're not a big violence guy. All right, but you know the premise of this, don't you? At no. Least. So it takes is, place. Is Piper in the movie? He's the star. Wow. He's called, he's called Nada, mm. and uh, he uh, is just a bum in this town, and he stumbles into this uh, place that it, that he stumbles into this place. He knows something illegal is going on, and he finds a box of sunglasses. In fact, there's a little video playing now. If you watch, this is the first time he puts the sunglasses on, and he looks up. And of course, Dreamcatch just spliced in some weirdness, but he looks up and he sees things in his sunglasses that he didn't see without them. Mm. And what's happening is uh, there are aliens on the planet and they have changed all the advertising and stuff with stuff messages like obey, mm. consume, reproduce, like subliminal. Right, right. You know, And so with these glasses, he can see the alien right there, oh, see yeah. obey. And so with these glasses on, he can see uh, uh, what the true identity of, of these people that are aliens and whatnot. It's It's... It's a great movie. It also includes the stupidest and longest wrestling alley fight in the history of film. <laughs> is in this movie. It's a, I mean, it's epic. It's uh, you know, it's everyone raves about it. You should watch it with Eep. I think you would both enjoy it. Okay. I, I sincerely think that it's okay. not. It, there's no bloody death or violence. Okay. I, I mean, there's violence, but it's dumb guy right. violence. Okay. So Sounds anyway, good. I wanted to mention that about Dreamcatcher's wacky video. Something else I want to mention that's sort of old news, but sort of not. Um. Uh. Um. Chris Folds, our good and dear friend, who put out the amazing Chase HQ uh, comparison arcade versus Amiga, and I told him I said keep these coming. I love them. You know we love this stuff, don't mm -hmm. we, Boat? Uh, this got an upgraded sound uh, uh, job done on it for some sound issues that the video had. So if you tried to watch this before and you didn't like the way it sounded, go back and. Uh, it sounds perfect now, right? Everything sounds good on it. And it, it really is an excellent video. It does a real good job comparing the two. And it makes me sad that the Amiga version of this is so uh, utterly pathetic. Terrible, but yeah. it is It is what it is. And also, you can enjoy the awesome Chase HQ poster that's that's, <laughs> that's posted up there. I, I thought that was an awesome poster. Now, I want to talk about this. This is, this is awesome. Our new uh, good pal, uh, Amigo Adam, has, uh, has put up an epic... Amiga 500 restoration and cleaning. Now, Boat, have you have you had a chance to watch this video yet? I have. 
Uh, uh, so again, this is uh, new. Uh, this is our newest member of the Amigos team, Adam Bradley, making his debut. Entering the brain trust. Right, entering the brain trust. Uh, he has an old 500 that was recently given to him back from his back to his, from his family. This has been in a cupboard for years and years and years. And so his plan is to tear it down, restore, fix anything that needs to be fixed, clean everything up, and get it grand spanking new again. Now, when you first saw this video and you saw this cover he's got on the front here, I, when I first saw that, I was only, I wasn't paying attention because I was in the little window. I thought it had been melted. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I was like, oh my god, how's he going to restore that? The whole thing's been melted. Well, it's it's a it's a tight cover. Yeah, you used to see that a lot more on computers. Those those plastic covers on the keyboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But uh, Adam, make sure you check out this video if you're a fan of uh, restoration. Uh, Adam's put a lot of work into it, and it's really, really beautiful camera work and very informative. So. Yeah. Okay, so next on the docket, we had a lot of stuff on the site this week. Let's talk about Dreamcatch's uh, latest foray into Western game here. This is Badlands Pete. Now, I'm, I got, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never heard of this game. No. It looks like Burt Reynolds on the cover, though. It's a, it, the, I, love, I love it. You know, I love Western stuff. And Do, are I, you a fan of the Western as a genre? I, you know, it's funny. When I was a kid, I was into some Westerns, but it was mostly like quirky Westerns, like the Wild Wild West, one of my all-time favorite shows. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, that must oh, watch. Oh, yeah. That's great. And not that godforsaken <laughs> film. All right? Do not watch that. But also, I liked the Lone Ranger and Poncho, Where were you on the Bonanza? Cisco Kid. I didn't like Bonanza or Gunsmoke. I, those didn't do it for mm. me. I liked Maverick. Was mm. okay. I could deal with that. Uh, but and then uh, in, in my older years, I you know I love me some Deadwood, which you can't watch. Yes. Uh, but because uh, it's ultra violent, but it's a it's a really good gritty show. And so anytime there's some Western action. Uh, it, it, I'm interested. So this game is going to be put on my list. I, I, like I said, I've not played it before. Uh, and I love Western stuff. And there's not a ton of Western games out there. I mean, there's some, but there's not a ton. I'm, right. And, and there, what was the famous, uh, the uh, arcade shooting game that was on, that Capcom oh, did? Oh, Gunfight? Uh, no, the, uh, Capcom did the... the, the uh, oh, Wild Guns? No, no, no. Keep going. Wild Arms? No, That's no. an RPG. It, anyway, they've got a good one. Uh, but and my my son loves the the uh, Moo Mesa game, the Cowboys of Moo Mesa. <laughs> you ever played that? Oh yeah, that so, had a, that was a cartoon. That also, was, yeah, that was a cartoon. So, so that's that's one to uh, to have a look at. And again, Dreamcatcher, it, it's always top shelf with the with DK. Um, let me see if I've got anything. Oh, I should probably mention the thing I did. Um, <clears throat> I came and saw and conquered. I didn't know way to get myself out of that. I, uh, um, it's just we've been playing uh, Supercars this week, and Supercars 2, I put up a video of me playing some Supercars, and uh, uh, and I just played until I lost, basically. So it's about a half hour of some Supercar action, and uh, uh, I will probably put up Supercars 2 in, over the weekend to complete the set. Mm. Uh, and uh, I know you also said you didn't you say you yeah I, I won't put that up for another couple days uh but uh yeah i've also played some supercars and supercars too and that will be coming up on the side as well it's okay for us to play this separately because there's no two player in supercars one so Correct. We, it's okay we're Correct. allowed to do it that mm -hmm. way uh, but uh so there's that and i and i had a good time and again that's the i'll thank the huckster for his uh, uh that 600 because i've been playing everything on it so and it's very conveniently located right beside my bed. <laughs> just knock it out. Very good. That's the long and short of it, Bo. You got anything to add? Yeah. You um, did some crazy non-Amiga stuff this week, too, didn't right. you? Right. So if we take a look over at our uh, YouTube channel here, we can do a quick rundown of everything that's been released, uh, starting with uh, Brutal Barracuda, who is back, baby, uh, after a yes. slight respite. After, Brutal Barracuda. After we, back, after we screwed him over, he's back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's back with another episode of Nostalgic Nonsense. This time he's taking a look at Alcatraz, which sounds really, really uh, cool. Like, this is sort of like, um, reminds me of that game that we played, Rescue the Embassy Mission. Oh, yeah. What was that called? Hostages? Um, hostages, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know if it's anything like that, but it, it seems like it might be. Um, so uh, he's got that up on the site. Um, we should also mention that Brutal has a, has his own channel, right? And it's great, especially for like uh, modern like first person shooter stuff. Uh, I, I get on there just to watch some of the some of the antics, and uh, man, Brutal's also very good with video production and stuff. He, he's, he's a good he's hand, a good hand. Sure. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and explain speaking, that one. Speaking both. of good hands, uh, I uh, we were also sent Liberation again. 
I'm going to be honest. I can't I remember think, who sent I it to us. I think that might be brutal as well. Maybe so. Um, we Because uh, we've not known who that was before, too. Yeah. Um, I tried to play this game. Uh, it, <laughs> this is comedy gold, Yeah, folks. and uh, I failed miserably. Uh, I had no idea what was going on. I had the manual right in front of me. That's a cool cover it's got, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's got all these reviews on the front. It got 90s across the board. I guess I just don't have the brain to comprehend something like this. It's just, it's it was too complex. Must I um, take over, boat yet again? You must. <laughs> yeah, <again>. no way. <laughs> I already watched this. I'm like, I'm not gonna touch that one. That yeah. looks like a boat game. So if you want to see what somebody looks like just flailing around in the darkness, <laughs> alone watch, watch in the this dark. Video. <laughs> um, in addition to that, uh, I also played some Atari uh, 8-bit stuff uh, this week. Uh, I did a stream of um, about an hour long stream. I just couldn't get enough of Atari 8 bit. I know you're a big fan of the platform, the 8 bit platform. I watched you play some, including, uh, uh, you know, that River Raid. Uh, that was the computer version, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'd not seen that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, boy, it, it, one thing about it, it differentiates itself from the. Uh, from the uh, Atari version, just by the 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 the, the borders and the uh, coastline, there are very um, jagged. Well, no, I mean they just they look. I like that. It looks good. That thick kind of that thick black line in there. It it, it looks better, I think, than River Raid on the Atari, which that's a duh duh statement. But I think it looks good. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't like it as much. I yeah. like the I like the more pastoral setting with the houses and things of the. the this looks more warlike than that. But yeah, it does. It looks yeah. more like a real River Raid. Yeah. Um. So I played that. I played a game that I. Really really like uh, an old basic cover disc game called Biker Dave, where uh, you take off in your in your motorcycle and you, you kind of have to select your speed so you can go through a hoop and do an Evil Knievel style jumping over the cars when they you're had, done. They had a game like this on the uh, Coco. And you would have to place the you have to place the ramps and adjust your speed and select how many vans you want to jump. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it looked a lot better than that too. So, but it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. So this is just a game that I. I think every computer's for, had yeah. a game like that, haven't they? Uh, there's a game called Caverns of Mars that I played. That <laughs> used to play the heck out of this. This is a real classic. Great. Right. It's sort of a it's sort of a Super Cobra. Uh, except uh, it's a vert as right. opposed to a sideways. Mm -hmm. I, this is another game I'd forgotten this existed, and when you when I saw this pop up, I'm like, "Holy smokes, that was a great game!" and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So I played a lot of that, and of course, I can't fire up the uh, the Atari Eight Bit without playing a little Blue Max. You ever wonder why blowing up fuel adds to your fuel? Yeah, in Caverns that of Mars, work? that's a, a strange it, not, not, thing. I mean, every game that yeah, happens. That's true. You shoot the fuel. You know, but... man, I might run out. Of, like, it's all I run out of gas. I'm gonna blow up a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> if only that worked, that'd be blowing gas stations up left and right. Um, I also took a look at uh, Mario Brothers, both the XE version and the original version for the Atari 8-bits, which looks a lot different. That is the, what is that, the, uh, is that the computer version? This is, yeah, this is the, this is the version that came out in concurrence with the XEGS system. You know, the, I'm looking, at, for our, uh, people that are listening, this looks, has a very CGA quality to it, doesn't it? It yeah. doesn't look very attractive. Um, however, compared to the original version for the Atari 8-bit computers, it looks great, because really? this is the original version. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That's and not this that looks good. like this actually does look like something that was on the Coco. It's got that. Hey, the, <laughs> the hell? what is it with you ragging on the Coco? Um, played some pole position. I played all kinds of stuff on the Atari Eight Bit. So uh, check out that stream if you're interested. You can watch all day too. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we uh, released some more shows from our vault. Uh, did you got, mention the ZX Spectrum stuff you did? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting yeah. to that in just a second. Oh, uh, we, we released uh, episode 14, Fright Night. Um, I was so happy to see this go up because that is a that is a, a, a seminal episode of, of glorious. The reception for that episode has been off the charts. It has. It's gotten a lot more feedback than I thought it would. There's hey, a if, lot of fans of that film. If you want to hear me talk about meeting the cast of Fright Night, then that's the because that was really the high point of it. They really the game wasn't, but it looks good. It still look at that. That looks great. It's just it's and the concept of this. It could have been a good game. Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't. It was quite bad. Um, if you're a fan of uh, early 80s um, British PCs, I did a stream of uh, ZX Spectrum. This is part two of that stream where I looked at Shadow of the Beast, uh, Lotus. And this was sort of like, let's look at some Amiga ports and lo what they looked like on the Spectrum. And uh, you can see that- Let's see Lotus. Can so you? Lotus actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's two colors. But it runs pretty smooth for for an eight bit system. I actually think I think it runs better than Outrun does on the Amiga. Oh, what doesn't? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? 
That, get, that little electronic game I got you runs better than Outrun. That's run. true. That's true. Uh, and of course, I had to play a little bit of Manic Miner, but this is Manic Miner. Uh, I'm sorry, this is actually Jet Set Willy, not Manic Miner, but it's almost the same game. But this classic. Is, this is a Lord of the Rings mod for, uh, for Jet Set <laughs> what Willy. What did you come up with that? Uh, I, it was just on the list of games. And so, um, and I got about as far in this as I do any of the Jet Set Willy games. Which Those is, games are kind of tough, they're aren't they? Very I mean, tough. For, I mean, I'm sure people crush them, but yeah, I'm not, 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 I'm not amongst them. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, anyway, that was uh, what I got up to this past week. Um, so, as always, make sure you check out, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, there's there's new stuff coming out all we the got, time. We got there. YouTube, we've got uh, Google+, Plus, we got Facebook, we got uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. we've got uh, freaking Twitter. Twitter, we're on Spreak, we're everywhere. We're Wherever all over the map. Did you say Spreak? What a nice a Spreaker, you know what it's called? What's I don't it? know what you're talking about. Spreaker? Oh, you mean, yeah. You can you can stream our the audio of our show. I Some people have the Spreaker. app, though. Yeah. You can just, we're on the, uh, we're on the uh, Alexa, you yeah. know, that gimmick. Yeah, you can, if, you, if, you, if you just say, play Amigos, everything Amiga podcast, it'll play our latest in. episode. You ever so. do that? I, sometimes, just really? to impress just, my friends. Just to show people that yeah. you're cool? <laughs> Does it work? They're suitably unimpressed. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, good try, anyway. All right. Aaron, it's time to dive in to the meat of the show. It's time to talk a little bit about supercars. Supercars. I'm actually kind of excited about this one, but so supercars was released in 1990 and on two discs. Although I've, I keep reading, there was a one disc version that I didn't. I don't. I didn't use that when I used a two disc version. What, which one did you use? Uh, I played the WHD. Well, so you version, don't. You don't. So have I have no idea. Uh, this was a one player game for now, and was <laughs> was developed. <laughs> By Magnetic Fields. Now, both Magnetic Fields, we've heard them of them these guys before. They did uh, several of the games that we reviewed. I'm sorry, we looked at uh, with a critical eye. Uh, they did uh, Kid Chaos, which we... Uh, weren't we too weren't, high on Kid well, Chaos. Well, we just didn't like the guy. Yeah. Um, uh, I did like some of the control aspects of it. Uh, they also did the Lotus series. Oh, remember those? Mm -hmm. And they've done uh, Wrangler. And they've done uh, a game called Crystal Dragon. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I don't that sounds cool. That. Uh, you know, we always hear about these games with dragon in the title, and we never play any of them. Well, we did Dragon's <laughs> Lair. We did that one. And they also did Super Scramble Simulator, which mm, that sounds interesting. Sounds like a flight you know? simulator, yeah. yeah. Um, this, was, uh, the, this was the usual crew for Magnetic Fields. You had, uh, and these are all sort of legendary names now. You had Sean Southern in there. You had uh, Andrew Morris, and you had Jeremy Smith. The usual suspects in there. The music in this game was done by Ben Daglish, uh, and you may recognize him from a game I can't believe we did, but we did Motorhead. Remember Motorhead game? We uh, never actually did that. You might have done. No, we did it. We did it. We did an Amigos it. play on yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we and he also did Flintstones, a few others. Uh, so uh, this game runs on just the standard hardware, nothing special, and uh, it's a top-down car racing game i mean and, and it's that's pretty much what it is if, if you've played super sprint or uh dave iron man stewart's well uh, off-road it's, right? it's it's different than those games but i mean I, i'm saying that that's it's a top-down racer with a twist right? right with a small twist um but, but we'll get to that so uh, this was. I was surprised how much stuff this appeared on. Were, were, were you? Did you look at the list? I, I haven't seen what this was. Now listen to, to this. Um, and this is one of these things that really blew my mind. So, of course, you had your Amstrad, and you had your Atari ST, mm -hmm. and you had your C sixty four. Those are all obvious ones. You had your uh, ZX Spectrum, the ZX. And we know that one. But here's the one that got me. This was on the NES. Only in Europe. Did you know that though? That I only NES know release? that because when I was looking for the box art, I came across the NES version. But I can see why. I mean, this game would be really fun on the NES. Absolutely. Now, yeah. now, uh, can you think of any games on the NES that were of this ilk? Sure. That were famous ones. Yeah, RC Pro Am. That's the only one I can think of. And, and I mean, Micro Machines. That was on the Micro too, Machines. And Ivan Iditarod was on but the one NES. Thing that, one thing that these this game had that I that. The reason I wasn't a fan of those games on the NES was that you couldn't see far enough ahead of you to make an educated guess as to what you should do. Well, on Ivan Iditarod, you can see the whole track at once. Ivan Iditarod, I don't know, I've, I've not played that one. Yes, you have. All right, not Ivan Iditarod, Ivan Stewart. Yes, Ivan Stewart. That yeah. one's different. Yeah. I, I did Iditarod. I, I don't Isn't know. Is that the where Alaskan that came from. dog sled yeah, race? I, you know, I, I did. What, are you, what do you mean? You can't. 
It is. <laughs> yeah, you know, dog there are too many of those top the gun dog sled <laughs> simulation. Um, Holy smoke! So anyway, the NES did get. A, but you're a, right. A that is this. that is that is sort of the downfall of a, a lot of these games is that you can't see, you can't make a good. Decision. Micro Machines is especially bad at that because the and, game runs so fast. And the thing is, I want to love Micro Machines. It just drives me nuts yeah. that you can. I mean, people, some people are great at it, but mm. and that's some people aren't me. So. I, I, um, from what I read, the budget release of this was what came on one disc. I don't know what was cut out of the budget release that allowed that to happen, uh, but it, it did. So, um, what is Supercars? Like I said, we, we mentioned it's a top-down racer. You've got nine tracks and, and four difficulty levels. All right. So, what you do is you, uh, you uh, start the race, you try to place highly, you get money de uh, depending on how high you place, money that can be used to upgrade your car or buy a new car, okay? Um, the uh, options for your car are, you're pretty much standard fare, but there's some extra wackier things that you wouldn't expect. Uh, you can get, uh, uh, you know, you can upgrade your engine, you can repair your car, you can upgrade your, your steering, uh, you can make it so you aren't affected as much by uh, obstacles that appear on the track, and then you've got wackier options, and the two that come to mind are the missiles that you can buy mm -hmm. to make this an auto dueling game. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, the way this game is presented, and it comes up with an awesome opening screen and a great tune. Mm -hmm. the, the music in this is really good, I think. I think so too. And the op the opening screen where you've got these two, like, uh, it's almost like a newscast. You've got these two, I think one guy's named Harrison Ford, I can't remember the chick's name. And they sort of present this like a, like it's a a, a sport, right. you know, like you're, and so it's odd to me that this is presented as a sport, but then to, and then by and, the way, there's missiles. <laughs> I remember the first time I was shot at because I didn't at first I didn't know you, you I didn't know about the garage at all I just mm. would skip past it you know, and so when a sucker hit me with a with a missile I was like what in God's name was that, and then I'm like oh it's that kind of game it's a missile type of game. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if, if we're playing different games or what, but I played this game a lot. Yeah. And until you buy missiles, the, your opponents will not use missiles. Right. Well, well I, mean, I had went to the store and just bought a bunch of random oh, stuff. Oh, okay. So you, know, you so actually I, bought missiles. I didn't know I had. Yeah. Okay. The it adds an element to the game. We'll get to that. So let's talk about the visuals of the game. It's sharp, I thought. Mm -hmm. what, you know, you played this a lot. Give me your, we'll go ahead and let you have a word in here. You what know, did you think? My favorite kind of games are the games that don't take you out of the experience. Mm -hmm. Instead of having menus that are just text on the screen, or even worse, text within a, an imaginary computer on the screen, um, they, they actually, favorite. yeah, they actually, you know, put you inside the garage. You know, they show you the car lot where you buy your car. They show you the used car salesman that you have to negotiate with. Everything is presented as if it's real. You know, you, you forget that you're playing a computer game to some extent. Right. Um, and this game exceeds all expectations. I've never played a racing game with this much atmosphere. You know, from every aspect about it feels like there was a lot of thought put into it. Absolutely, and the, and the, also the environments and stuff are are attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the tracks are, uh, I mean, they're they're pretty good. Uh, the my problem, I guess, my main gripe is the fact that there's there there's not a lot of room to navigate, and so you're gonna you're endlessly running into your opponent or the wall. Uh, and it's hard. This is one of those games where it's hard to build up ahead of steam. You, this is not pole position. Right. You're not going at top speed throughout the game. You're going to be ramming suckers. Now, sometimes that's fun. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be uh, hitting the wall a lot. Now, as I played this, I did get better. I will say I played this mo almost entirely on the uh, Amiga CD32 gamepad. Mm -hmm. And I found, and I did try the Wicca in it. You know, I love the Wicca, but I found in this particular game that the gamepad suited it better than the Wicca did. I played this with a PS4 stick, so I was using right. basically the same thing as the CD32 pad. Um, 
I, you know, I felt like I could control really well. In fact, I feel like I'm playing it better than the video that we're watching right now from World of Long Plays, although I'm sure that that's not true because those guys are awesome. Yeah. But um, but I felt like the, the way that you drift around corners and things, like if you let off the gas at just the right time and then gun it as you're coming around the turn, if you time it just right, you can come out of there and, and be going really fast. Um, I thought that the way that the shadows fall on the track is really, really impressive. For example, when you go under a bridge, like the shadow of the bridge will fall on your car, which is, I mean, like they didn't have to do that, you know, yeah, and, and they didn't have to put shadows on the track at all. They rendered the ele the parts where the track elevates and, and, and goes up and down, they're easily easy to identify. Mm -hmm. You know when you're going downhill, you know when you're, when you're going uphill. Getting back to what you said about the uh, effectively what is the, what is drifting uh, in the car, I, I I'm glad it's there, and I'm sure if you're good enough at this game, you can master it. Right? To me, basically, effectively, when you let off that gas and you're turning on a curve, you're gonna you're gonna drift. You don't have. There's no way to stop it. Well, yeah, because it's so, like a real car. Well, uh, it is, and so but I, it took me a long time. Basically, when I stopped, I just stopped stopping in turns. I just would keep gunning it because what would happen to me more often than not is that I would drift off to the side and the computer would just undercut me. Mm. And let's let's not uh, dodge that. The computer in this is an excellent is a pretty good foe. I mean, I thought they were pretty, and I thought it was. I liked the computer. They gave me a good race. The races were often very competitive. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, when I would lose, I would lose big. It was really? normally because I would botch something. Yeah. You, you get a certain amount of mistakes that I feel. I always felt like you could me you could mess up a couple times, but if you really get behind, it's hard to catch up. There's it, no rubber banding in this. And, no, there's not. And the and the computer is not. You got you know. It's not a bunch of fumbling idiots out there. But yeah. They, especially once you get you know get going on. I, I would skip ahead. You know, I, I was trying some of the other tracks. And you know you've got to be on your game mm -hmm. because they'll, they'll they'll run away with it, and you'll you'll be lingered around with the last place guys. You can still beat some guys that mm -hmm. are just really bad, but I mean you're not going to get into money. You're pretty much bone, you know. So, like I said, we we also mentioned you can also get uh, uh, new cars. Okay, uh, there are uh, there are three cars in the game that you can buy. Uh, you can buy the and I'm going to try to pronounce these because they're wacky. The uh, Taraco. Neo, Neo, Neo Rotor Turbo, the Va Interceptor Turbo, and the Retron Parsec Turbo. That last one sounds like one of those uh, uh, retro gaming consoles that they're releasing yeah. now. Uh, and, and, and according to Wiki, anyway, these were based on something that resembles real cars, uh, which I, I've never heard of these real cars either. The, the uh, Suzetta. Morador V one sixteen T. Same Mordor. Yeah, Mordor. <laughs> Straight out of Mordor. The, uh, oh, it's, it's this one. There's one the Honda NSX and the Alfa Romeo. Of that one, I've heard of SZ. So that you know, there's a couple cars that, that are you know real cars that they just base these on. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. I read an interview where the guy said, "Yeah, we couldn't really start using real cars until we did a load of stuff." And then, so and I, that makes sense because yeah. obviously she's now one thing we haven't touched on are the obstacles that appear in the game. Uh, you'll get um, like an oil slick, mm -hmm. and then you'll get like, I guess it's like a pile of sand. There'll be like dirt on the track, you know. And they they will affect your car in different ways. And there's like this water as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so if you hit oil, you spin around, unless you've bought the anti-spin around option for your car that will keep you from spinning as much. Uh, when you hit sand, it just it, your speed drops like a rock, right. and you, you basically slow way down. Slow way down. And again, there's an option for that, and then, and then the water that's not true, and it basically causes your car to jerk a little bit. Um, it affects the computer as well. It's fun to smack these guys into obstacles. That's always mm -hmm. good for a laugh. And if you time, depending on the track, if you time your missiles right, uh, you could cause a major league uh, like bottleneck, which is always entertaining. Uh, some of the tracks get downright claustrophobic. Uh, there, I think it's like the I think it's like the fifth or sixth track. On the first level is the first one I hit. Most of my, my experience is on the, on the first set of tracks. And the, it's literally, there's enough room for two cars, and then you're pretty much boned. Mm -hmm. So you have to, and if you get behind on that one, you got problems because you're going to have to pass these guys and there's barely enough room. Uh, so it's it can be difficult. Uh, again, your car takes damage, and so you've got to go in. I remember the first time I played this game, the very first time, uh, I didn't know about 
the garage, the damage, and so my tires blew out like the third that, race. That's it. That's game over. You know, and right that's there. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so you've got to always constantly go back and, and repair your car. And of course, if you were out of money, uh, oops, I can't afford to repair my tires this round, or I can't afford to uh, repair my engine, you're in trouble from Jump Street, you mm -hmm. know, right out of the gate. Uh, something else that I thought was entertaining about this game was the when you're buying a new car, you get to haggle with the car salesman. The car salesman, I'm, he looks like if you're, and I'm sure all these NPCs are based on who knows people in the office or the developers, but he looks like uh, if you ever watched the uh, uh, Beastie Boys video for Sabotage, oh, yeah. does yeah. he look yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> it's the dead on. He's got like, the big hair and the mustache. Oh, jeez, like oh, that's him. <laughs> that's absolutely right. I'm not. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So overall, though, uh, you know, uh, I, these I'm like boat. I, I'm a sucker for these kind of like old school racing games because I, I hate to admit this, but I think people know it by now. Newer games like your your uh, uh, Gran Turismo and all these things, I just, man, I just can't do it. I like the arcadey stuff mm. and the I like a simple kind of a dopey game, and this is the this is the kind of game I can get into. And I played this game. A lot this week, uh, more than I usually would play a game. Of course, like I said, the, having the six hundred sitting there would help. But I was just like, man, I got some. I got ten minutes. Let's fire this thing up and go. And I played it a lot. I used the GoTech Drive and loaded this thing off disc. And it, it and it's another one of these games that it's not that bad. It loads pretty quickly once you get it loaded in, and it, mm -hmm. and it plays pretty well. So overall, I've got nothing really bad to say about it. I like the music. I thought the graphics looked good. Uh, I, th I thought it was a fun game. I didn't feel like I was over my, in over my head. It wasn't too confusing. The kind of game I dig. Yeah. So there's lots of little touches. Uh, one more that I didn't that I, that I just got reminded of when I was watching this is uh, when you um, finish a race instead of it just giving the places you know and the money, mm -hmm. you roll up slowly in front of this cheering crowd, and then you see the numbers just sort of fall down yes, in front of you. I love that. It's like the, it's like uh, the stock market or something. Right, like right. And uh, we're going to see this if you if you're watching the video right now. It's it's going to come in, and you see your car and the people cheering. And I love that. That's such a great touch. Um, and the game's colorful. I love the fact that they put all these people in there. Mm -hmm. They all look different. Yeah. They're, they're all animated. I mean, and you don't see that that often. They could have just put the car up there, and you know, right. and no one would have said anything. But boy, it looks. When you've got the, and this this game and the sequel both have the kind of cheering crowds and they they make a lot of people in the background and they're all wearing different types of shirts and it's always well, lovely. Let's talk a little bit about the next game in the series, Supercars Two. We're gonna roll. Well, actually, before we go on, let's talk about the reviews for this. So, okay. um, Lemon gave this a score, Supercars One a score of eight point one mm -hmm. one, which is that's I'd say that's pretty much right in the wheelhouse of what I would be thinking on this one. Uh, it reviewed well. Uh, you've got mostly uh, 80s or high 70s. Uh, CU Amiga was sort of the lone exception. They gave it a 67, which I, I can't imagine why they didn't like it. Yeah. This game, again, I ran this uh, on the stock Amiga 600 with no acceleration, no extra memory. It ran perfectly fine. I mean, it's not the quickest game I've ever played, but uh, it was for me, it was perfectly fine. I didn't have, I didn't have any trouble with the way it ran. Mm -hmm. So uh, overall, uh, I, I, I really liked it. And one more thing, I did look this up on eBay. There are none currently available. Wow, that's surprising. Uh, I, one sold in December in the UK boxed for a 1350. So this might be one, maybe if you see it, eh, you might want to grab it. Because I think most people, and just looking at our chat tonight, most people are far more familiar with the sequel. Mm -hmm which we'll go into now, Supercars 2. So Supercars 2 uh, came out in 91. So uh, if you'll recall, Supercars 1 came out in 90. So this is your, we see this a lot on the Amiga. You got a year, they probably started development straight away on the second one. And it was probably mostly some tweaks and some upgrades. And they probably had some stuff in mind when they finished the first one for mm -hmm. what they were going to do. So it was a quick turnaround. Uh, again, same developer, uh, again, published by Gremlin. Uh, which uh, they, they did a lot of the magnetic field stuff. Uh, you know, again, Sean Southern, all the same exact boys. So there's no reason to go over that again. Uh, two discs. <clears throat> uh, this one wasn't released on the NES. Uh, this one got, in fact, this had a, a le far less actually released. Uh, there's a, a Amstrad version, an Atari ST, and a ZX Spectrum. So not even a C64 version of this. Hmm. And I was surprised that neither one of these were adult one DOS. It kind of, kind of surprising. Not one. Surprising. You could put a DOS version out. Yeah. And a game that this isn't Wing Commander. This is a taxing, 
this isn't a taxing game. You should be able to put this out in a lot of systems. So sure. I was kind of surprised. I just wonder if maybe, um, you know, they didn't have, of course, if they were coming out on the NES, you know, I, there's no reason why they couldn't have come out on anything. Sure, sure, absolutely. So what is different about Supercars 2? Well, they <laughs> there's some crazy additions to this one. Uh, again, same cool tune that starts it up, colorful backgrounds. I love the shot of the crowd towards the beginning there where it's got all the people. There's one person wearing this orange shirt that I, I'd love to know what it says. I can't, if you know what I'm talking about, yep, yeah. I couldn't make out what I think it, it's some sort of a British like joke. Yeah, as, <laughs> you know, uh, the uh, uh, the game starts out with some copy protection. Uh, no you, on the go is or that something what it like says? that, yeah. Uh, and and the, uh, this one has a, an odd, they've changed the menu system in this. And it's a, uh, it's sort of a, uh, what would you call it? paneling or something? It, <laughs> it's, it's sort of what I like to call the easy way out. I've got a lot of bad things to say about this game. Oh, okay. And it well, starts with the menus. The menus, it, they're sort of what I would say is Lotus Light. Mm -hmm. You know, they sort of reminded me of a very l l crummier version, but it's, <laughs> they just appear on blocks of yeah. wood. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't get what that, what they were going for there. No. Did you, did you get what? They I don't were... know why they think that was appropriate. It was odd, and I mean, it didn't hinder the game or anything. And and really, the uh, options, setting the options, is easy. There was no problem with that. But it was it was just different, right? So um, this game adds a lot of interesting stuff. Number one, uh, it there's a lot more radical tracks in this, and and what they added, really, the main thing they added was a lot. And I'm not sure it's a good thing in some instances. They added jumps, which are cool. I like the jumps. They, and, and crisscrosses and stuff, but what they also added were like, the first game had sections where you couldn't see your car, uh, like tunnels, but this one had some really long tunnels. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you get sideways on one of these tunnels, you're boned. I mean, you are boned. And it's real tough to, to, to get out of the tunnels. Uh, I will say, in terms of the actual gameplay on this one, uh, I think it's a little quicker, but the I had much, I had a much, and this doesn't make any sense, that may just be me. I'll just say that up front. I had much more trouble controlling my car in this version than I did in the first version. I, and I, don't, I can't explain it. I mean, they're, they're pretty much the same game, but, uh, and, you know, obviously the traction, but I had, I just didn't think the control was as good. I, maybe it's just me. Did you have any trouble with the control? This game is crap. Wow, really? You didn't like it? After playing Supercars 1, it was such a letdown. Whoa, oh. it, the, the controls are totally different. It feels totally different. I think it runs slower. <laughs> Even though you're farther away, which I also don't like, um, you're, you can't, it's, you can't, I never got that sense of speed. Um, the, you can fit more cars on the screen. There's a two-player mode. Yes. There's I think there's more focus on combat because you're shooting missiles right out of the get-go. And, on and this mines one. Yeah, and stuff. Mine, yeah. And it's it is. I mean, it's a it's more like it's Death Race City. Out right. There. It is. It's the 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 additions they made to the track, like a jump. Well, in theory, that's cool. But on a totally top-down racing game, it doesn't matter. You could I, I, the whole thing could be a jump because you're looking at it from the top down. You never get any sense of height. Like, oh man, I'm doing this awesome thing. I'm going off a jump. You know, um, the the only thing that happens if you get hit with a missile in the middle of a jump, you go down to the the floor. But you don't even start from down there. Your car flickers and disappears, reappears farther down on the track. Um, they've done away with every single thing that I like about the first game. They've done away with the garage. Here's your fake computer. I knew you were going to bring this the, up. Yeah. The, the Amiga 2000 times yeah. two. It's Man, Amiga 1000 with an extra drive bay. Nothing puts me in the, you know, like I'm really racing a race car, like operating a fake computer uh, to buy my parts for my fake car in this fake race. It isn't. It's a tra it isn't. I will say that's uh, after having the cute girl with the garage in the first one, that is sort of a, that's a, kind of a bummer. Gone is the awesome scene that we just talked about where you roll up after a race and the people are cheering. Now it's just a black screen with the placements and the yeah. money that you get. Yeah, you're right. You're the right. colors are all washed out in this. Uh, there, It's everything. It looks like a Bitmap Brothers game. Just crap. Just brown wow, and gray right. everywhere. Off of that statement. Oh, I don't Bitmap care, Brothers. man. But you're it's, saying their games are like post-apocalyptic. Yeah, so. yeah. Like, I don't want that in my supercars, you know? Like, the game should be bright and cheerful because that's what the first game is and that's what the title screen is. They you also know? got rid of the in-track in music. They also got rid of a lot of the people standing around the tracks. I mean, there there is a greater variety of landscape. You know, there's yeah. different sorts of rocks and things. But to me, that that is, that is a... a 
a sad trade-off. I'm not as down on it as you. Um, the, I agree with everything you said, with, with a few exceptions. I think the jumps add a lot to it. I, I enjoyed the jumps. I enjoy, and what's fun about them is, uh, what and what if you I don't know if you play the ex, the later level stuff where there's like crisscrosses and stuff. I mean, you're trying to get across a jump and you just endlessly are ramming other people who are also jumping, and you both fall back to where you all have to go back around the bend. It adds something to the game that's fun. Uh, I like that. But you don't you don't have to go back around the bend. When you fall off a jump, you explode and they place you further well, on no, down the track. No, no, not necessarily. If you no, I'm Look, talking, you can see it right no, no, here. No, no, you're when I when I'm talking about is the crisscross is when you two cars hit each other in midair, you bounce back to where you were. Oh, okay. You know, so it, it, it so you have to sort of replay a certain part of it. Mm -hmm. Something else I I thought was neat. I mean, I Here's my thing on the combat. I mean, if you're going to have combat, let's have some combat. And they did include more combat stuff. Yeah. And and this game is it's not a friendly racing game I and mean, you're out there to kill suckers. Yeah. You sure. know, and so you need to stock up on missiles and mines because the other can you can be darn sure the computer is gonna drop the hammer right. without any sort of problem and, with it. And to be honest with you, I think that that is the one flaw in Supercars 1, is that I really feel like the missiles were an unnecessary addition. Like, if you're going to go the car combat route, you need to go all out. Right. You know? You know, I, I, here's my thing. I could have done without any combat. Mm -hmm. I would just like right. that. But, I mean, I, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, so... Here's my here's one of my problems. My my major problem with the game. And by the way, everything you said is true. Plus the music, it's not as friendly or as cheery. Although there are screens that are pretty. The wood grain menus and stuff. I don't get. Yeah. I don't get what they were going for. It's the it wood. does look. It does sort of remind me of Lotus, though I can't really explain why. Well, I mean, you same know. font. Yeah, I think it that's must be the font. Yeah. But there are long, long. Oh. There are long tunnels in this game, and the tunnels are not transparent when you're in them, mm -hmm. right? If they were cut away, and so you could see, I love tunnels, great. But if you can't see what you're doing in the tunnel, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And if your car gets wound up in there, you could be in there for an extra 10 seconds trying to just get yourself to a point where you could see your car. Right. Uh, when, you, when you hit the jumps, you have to be either straight on the jump or diagonally on the jump where you're going to be able to get across without hitting the land. Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, you'll bounce back to the level below. So you have to sort of line yourself up, but you've got some options. Yeah. In the tunnel, you better be damn sure lined straight up because you could be in that tunnel and, and be screwed. Plus, if you get killed in the tunnel, horrible. If you get stuck in that tunnel, oh, man. And that's what really took me out of it was the tunnels. I like the new tracks. Uh, I liked I liked a lot of that stuff. I, the new weapons again. If, if I, I don't mind a good weapon based game, but I wouldn't have done it this way. I would have made a whole other game for weapons that was more of a death rally type. You know, something like that where you are. That's the gimmick. Right. You know, you've got a bunch of Mad Max guys or a bunch of crazy like a Carmageddon. Mm -hmm. This game, it's odd to see a game that has missiles and stuff, and the opening of it is these two newscasters, and there's children in the crowd and stuff. It's like, what are we doing? Is this Death Race 2000? Exactly. It, 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 this game has two personalities, you know. Uh, <clears throat> again, I can control the other game better than this one. That's, again, it could just be me, but I, I thought the other one controlled better. And I thought this one was, like I said, I thought it was a touch quicker, in my opinion. But the tracks, again, this one had real small... Areas for the car. Yeah, it, it seems like this is a, these tracks are even more narrow than the, than the first one. It's almost you know, and, and I, I understand that they want to encourage you to blow up your opponents in front of you and, and, and overtake them that way. Um, another thing that I don't like about this is they've done away with a lot of the strategy behind the different kinds of damage your car can take. You don't have a tire meter anymore. Because like it used to be, like in, in Supercars 1, say you're, you're running a race and your tires are running low. Well, I'm not going to drift as much because that's harder on my tires. It, yeah. makes you, it takes it to a different level. Uh, this is just gives you a damage meter. Again, they're really focusing on the combat. Now, we would be remiss if we didn't touch on the, the wackiest addition to Supercars 2. And the wackiest addition are these in-between car, like, I guess, information sequences where you are, how would you describe this? Is it some sort of role-playing? Or It reminded me of sort of like the bar games uh, where you try the pickup artist. Right. That's that, what yeah, it reminds it's me It's very of. similar to that. So um, what these are, are it, after the race occasionally, you will have a, uh, a scenario pop up where you're, talking to say the one I had got more than often than not was the one where I was talking to the the uh, 
the, the uh, policeman. There's also one where you talk to like a driving instructor guy. They kind of give you this test. Uh, I, I did a little research. These, I mean, these are really wacky. I mean, they're, <laughs> it's another thing that just, it's odd that it's in the game. Mm-hmm. In the first one, we both enjoyed the car salesman. And it makes sense because you're dealing with a car salesman because you're getting a car. These are just random things that pop up and are questions you answer. And if you get enough of them right, you can get like a, some bonus points. All right. So uh, these games, I found out that there's uh, people have set around a map that what the hell is going on in these. And there's a right answer. There's a wrong answer. And there's sort of a neutral answer. I was going to say, does this affect, what does this affect in the game? Um... Uh, personally, I never got to the point where I got it, but it, I think it gives you like uh, um, victory points or something like that. It, I don't, it's a bonus uh, that you get if you get the answers correct. All right, I never got them correct, so I couldn't tell you exactly. It, I don't know what it does exactly, uh, but they're the answer. And you can go look the answers up now. There are people that have went through and figured out what all the answers are, but they're the, and the graphics in these are pretty good. Some of them they look really good, but I mean. I thought they were, I love a good wackiness. I like wackiness. Hey, I'm all about wackiness. But I didn't think these added to the game at all. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, in fact, I think they, like they would cost you money if you got the wrong answer. And that's what really pissed me off. Yeah, because you work hard to like, to earn this money. You've got a place. And if you, yeah, I can understand. Now you can turn the crap off. Mm -hmm. uh, But I just didn't, I I don't see why they wasted their, I would have rather had more, game stuff. I don't I think they wasted their time on on the uh on that stuff. But some people think they're clever. You know, I don't I don't I don't know. Um so I found an interview with Andrew Morris uh, who worked on the game and he had some interesting facts. I wanted to throw them out there. So uh um he, he they mentioned that the Alfa Romeo SZ was an inspiration uh, for a car, the car, one of the cars in Supercars One and Two, and they were asked them if they had access to them, and he and they did not. Uh, they, although they had, in, when they did the Lotus series, they had access to actual cars, so you could tell their standing what rose greatly by the time they got to the Lotus series. They, right. could, they could actually get some of these cars. Um, <clears throat> uh, he, they also asked him about the. Uh, in fact, most of it's the in the police station. There are these two pictures in the background. That looked like digitized pictures, mm-hmm. and they and so he was asked if they were digitized, and they weren't. They were just very well. They were beautiful. I mean, they looked great. And I think they're some of the developers that are on the wall, like wanted posters. One of the guys looked like the car salesman from the first game. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, they did get a digitizer at the Magnetic Fields, but it was not until Rally Championships they didn't have it for this. So uh, it's their hand drawn, mm-hmm. you know, just like everything else. Uh, you know, overall to summarize on this one, uh, I played this one. Less than I played Supercars One, uh, I still think this is a, a good game. I think it's got some flaws. I, I did try out the two-player option. I don't know if you tried it out at all, and um, it was very micro machiney in the fact that you, it cuts the the view distance way down, mm-hmm. and that makes a difference. Uh, that said, I like the additional track gimmicks they put in this. For example, gates. Yeah. That open and close. Uh, I thought that was cool. Uh, different routes you can take to complete your lap. I thought that was cool. You could try to overtake a sucker. Uh, they also added uh, trains that would have train tracks on it. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, that was cool. Something that's different in this than in the first one is that you're going to see a lot more exploded cars. Like, literally, I mean, you're, and you're going to run all, into them. constantly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, this is all about fighting. Mm-hmm. So, it, so you, in the first one, it's more about driving with some fighting. This one's all about fighting. Yeah, and and the driving I would love is there to see too. some of these innovations in the first game. You know, in just a, just a vanilla racing game without the combat. Well, let's talk. It's funny you should mention that. So let's let's move now. These are the these are the games that were released on the Amiga. Uh, these two here, and and again, the controls were okay. Uh, you know, they were they were okay in the way they implemented the the various. Other things that you had to do, they did a good job. I thought I, I like those. So let's go ahead and talk about. Believe it or not, there were a couple sequels to even these games. Uh, well, I guess we should go ahead. Well, we'll get back to this. So there was also Supercars International. Okay, this came out in '96. Okay, and it was put out by the Hit Squad. <clears throat> um, this was a DOS game. Okay, so um, this was basically a remake of Supercars 2 with uh, VGA graphics, 
256 uh, color graphics and new uh, new music. <clears throat> it had all 21 tracks from the uh, Supercars 2, and it, it had uh, you know some of the other stuff that was in Supercars 2. So it was a lot, it was much the same. Um, and again, it was a DOS only release. And also, one of the additional graphic features is that you would leave skid marks on the track. That and, guy is back with the no something good yeah, shirt. You gotta have him. <laughs> Pretty sick. So, um, just, and then we're gonna go over a couple of these just for fun. There's the wood grain is back, and uh, you've got, it looks like they fleshed it out a little bit from before as we look at it. This is my first look at it right here as boats loaded it up here. We're, we're looking at it right now. Um, I've heard nothing great about this. You know, I heard it was okay, you know. Uh, and it I've looks like they, they, they brought the garage back. Yeah, and, yeah. And so. that, but uh, I heard it was okay. The, now, this one I'm a lot more interested in. You can tell, I'm looking at it right now, it looks like the camera's a little closer to the track, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, there's not, it, it looks like it, it's smoother. As you, one would expect, I see they've got a little radar thing that looks good up there. I like the way that looks. Uh, but uh, it looks, you know, it looks similar, you know. Mm -hmm. Really, my problem with the game wasn't the graphics or the way it ran. It was just the, they changed the elements of the gameplay to make it less fun for me. Yeah. They brought that back, too. Mm -hmm. So then um, you've got Super Cars 3, okay? So Super Cars 3, I believe this one is a like sort of a fan-made Super Cars. Did you look into this one at all? No, I have not seen this. So... <laughs> um, this I, and the funny thing is, where did I see this originally? Was on um, indie retro the news. You know, uh, the uh, they had they had released no, uh, a notice about it in 2014. I don't really know. I don't even know how to search for this on YouTube. Yeah, well, it's not something you're going to see that often. The last update, as far as I could tell, was 2014. So it's a Java. Uh, GTGE powered remake of Supercars. Oh, okay. Right? It borrows stuff from both the Supercars games, and it features, according to this, it's got high resolution graphics, which are slightly tweaked to be a little bit better. It's got a two player mode. It's got all, and this is something I think is kind of interesting. It's got all the tracks from both the games, which that would be cool to have them all in one in one spot. Um, it's got car selection. It's got trains and gates, so they kept that from the second one. It brought forth those crazy communication screens, as they're called, with the cop and the mm -hmm. driving instructor. <clears throat> Again, it, I don't, I don't have I to. I can't have them. believe that that's those not are, th That's a new one. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one also included a track editor. Oh, that's neat. Right now, that would be fun. Um, it's got a shop and repair as well, so you've got the stuff that you remember from the first ones. I haven't tried this one because I don't. I never touch my PC for games anymore. I'm that guy. Mm. But I, I might give it a shot just to see how it plays. Um, it's a shame. I don't want to say that. Supercars 2, it's funny that you hated it that much because I I didn't hate it, but I really preferred and played the first one much more. I only hated it because I loved the first one so much. You really dug Supercars, didn't I you? love it. I think it's awesome. Um... I like the way, like, I don't know. This is this is kind of a, a weird thing to say, but like on the title screen for Supercars, let me pull it up real quick. Um, just the the people on the front of it look normal. Um, like there's like the 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 weird guy in the shirt. Uh, man, that's a really small image. Um, that's but, Supercars too. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, this, it's the same sort of thing. Let me just show you. I liked, well, in the original, you've got the two announcers, and they're standing in front of the Supercars sign, and the car drives by. Right, right. But so, it, it looks friendly. It's almost like test drive. Yeah, almost, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, these look like normal people. Like, the girls are not wearing, like, bikinis and stuff like, like the normal, like, hot rod sort of thing. Like, the guys look sort of dopey. You know, there's, like, the preppy guy in the sweater. There's this guy. Like Both games had cool crowd shots. It yeah. was colorful attire. Yeah. It's funny. Why does that appeal to us? I don't even know. I don't know either. Because it appealed to me too, <laughs> and we never talked about it. It's no. funny that, but I was the same way. I was like, "Look at this. It's, it's un like I was playing California Games the other day, okay, on the Amiga, and and California Games too, and they've got that. Where well, you select your thing. There's bikini girls there, and there's cool surf guys, mm -hmm. 
and, but I mean, it fit the genre sure, perfectly. Right. And I thought this is this is pleasant to me to see this little crowd. And you know, someone went through and had to draw each one of those guys mm-hmm. meticulously, draw them probably based on real people. Mm-hmm. And it, it's pleasing. It's funny how a little a little tidbit like that can make something more pleasing to to a person. The music in it is, I mean, Magnetic Fields, the, they always have great music, you know. It fits the game perfectly. And, I, and like I said, I like the music during gameplay. I, I really dug that. And I thought, um, I thought everything meshed well. It made a, it was a nice package. I, I would have gotten rid of the combat in both games. I, honestly, I would have gotten completely rid of it. And if there's a, a way to turn it off, that would be great. I would yeah. really just race. And that's what I love about the first game is that until you buy the missiles, there is no combat. You know, you can play through that whole game and never shoot anything. Yeah, I could do without the combat. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one thing. And again, I thought it was just, it just seemed out of place to me. But, you know, it's, it's I guess, like I, I mentioned in my video review, it's one of those things where people would clamor for if it wasn't there, maybe. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, so they it, figured it, we'll it put does it kind of set it apart from the other, you know, top down racers and stuff like that. Yeah. So. But uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I should probably mention, I looked up Supercars 2 on eBay as well. Here, let me see if I can dig it out. Uh, Supercars 1, like I said, was it was not the easiest game to find uh, online. And I don't think, I'm not, I'm not sure I even saw uh, uh, anything up for Supercars 2 at all. Because I don't have anything written down here, so I probably didn't see it. I want you to look it up on eBay real quick and we'll, and we'll find out. Supercars 3, of course, was download only. So as far as I could tell, it's free. Whether you could still get it or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but I may have to have a look at it because I mean, it has all the tracks. That might be kind of neat. It's funny when you're doing these reviews and you come across people that have done these like uh, up upgraded versions, like in, that are sort of they just you know did it themselves and put it up, and you stumble across these things that haven't been updated forever. The one that comes to mind was the uh, the fellow that was doing uh, the Galaga Deluxe or Deluxe Galaga, where they he had released a PC versions later on. Then he went to a pay thing. Then he went to Kickstarter, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're still floating out there. And I remember trying to like game versus to find this game that was released like. 2006 on the PC, yeah. and you can't find it's nothing. Like no it, it, land, it, yeah. you're, but you're out there, you know. You you can. It's like find. It's like solving a mystery. You're looking for clues. So this is Supercars 2. This has ended. Um, this was uh, an English version. It sold for uh, 191 bucks. Holy moly! That is yeah. that is out there. Which I'm wondering if, if uh, you know. I'm assuming Supercars 2 sold pretty well. You know. Yeah. Like I said, what makes me think that's that everyone, everyone, everyone talks about it talks about Supercars 2. It seems like not as many people played Supercars 1. Right, right. So, at that, I don't know. It may, very strange. But uh, fun games. Boy, I'm glad we we picked this because as mu- as down as it seems like we've been even in the second one, I thought they were both a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I thought the second one had brought a lot to the table. Like I said, there's some things I don't like about it, but I still thought it was great. And the first one was great, too. I really enjoyed them both. Um well, Aaron, it is time to uh, wrap up the show. Uh, but before we go, I just wanted to thank everybody that's hanging out with us in the chat room right now. We got uh, Henrik Anderson, Jason Warns, Pishbot still around. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us so late at night for you guys. Brutal, Brutal Barracuda, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us this evening. Um, and I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. As always, if you'd like to support Amigos, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. And uh, we're, we're, a couple weeks ago, you know, I sent out a call for uh, listeners to send in music uh, for the, the Patreon read. Well, Pishbot has responded. You're kidding and, me. And uh, he has composed a little blues jam on the acoustic guitar. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put it in in post because I don't have a way to mix the levels just oh, right. Oh, no. So in your mind, think about it as it's playing. And, of course, if you're listening to this uh, and you're not listening live, then you will hear it as I read. Hello, Boat. Hello, Adam. Um, this is for you. John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRocha, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stefan Sorgard Mortensen, Whoa, wow, Edwin Helen, Lindo75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Crisful, Crisful, Dreamcatcher, Roger, Graham Vebke, Brent Dowdy, Lane Denson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage. Why did you add that? Gary Hucker, 
Let's see Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Stiles, Anthony Jarvis, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Will Williams, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rule, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Humberstadt, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and Kill Bjorn Barr. Very good. That's, that gets, that's a long list. Now, look, can you go back and read? There was one name in there that I, that was beautifully read. Can you do that one again? You know the one I mean. Stefan Sorgard Mortensen. Wow. I love it. Love it. He's got a great they name. They got the best name. He's got an O way. with a line through when it. When you've got the zero in your name, yep. you're all man. That's right. You have to, there's probably a license or a test you got to take to have to pull that off. <laughs> like, you know, I got an O in my name. I can, like, maybe I should go down that road. You should just put, put that line right through it. What would that change it? my name to? Boy, we'd have to ask. We'd have to ask. We need Stephane. Cole Bjorn Barman to yeah. tell me what, what. If I change my name from Aaron to with a little zero in there, what do I get? You get awesome. Because it may That's sound may, may me sound cooler. That's true. Maybe everyone will have to pronounce your name in that Gimli accent. Hmm. I think I'm onto something here, Boat. I think so too. All right, Aaron. Next week, we're going to turn the tables around and go back to the sports. I can think of no more athletic sport. Than Jockey Wilson's Compendium of Darts. If you got a guy named Jockey, do you know much about Jockey? Oh, man, you've got to be all man to have that name. Well, you will. You will know about Jockey. What we now know about Jimmy White, you will know about Jockey Schnooker. Wilson. People love it when we say Snooker. They love it. They love the way we say Snooker. 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 <laughs> so now we're gonna be now we're gonna be watching darts at two a.m. and just That's can't right. get enough. That's right. I mean, I've I've already I'm, I'm we way better ahead get of some here. beer for that episode. I'm already here. I'm already right, here with the dogfish are. head sequence ale. Oh man, <laughs> I'm not drinking that. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Until then, adios. adios.